welcome to the Success Series webinar, our special edition today on virtual communication tips. I'm Christy Atwood. And I'm Kimberly Broussard, and we're so excited that you guys joined us today. Oh, yes. We have got some great information for you, and we also have lots of members of the talent development team who will be joining us today to share some tips that they've come across during these weeks that we've spent doing the teleworking thing. Um, we're finding that some of the ideas we came up with at first work, some of them not so much, and this gives us a chance to all share things that are that are working and not working for us as we go through this continued process. So uh, our goal for today, well, Kim, what is our goal for today? Oh, we're going to share some tips about virtual communication. And communication is very um, important at this time, especially because we don't have that in-person interaction. So I hope to learn, you know, some new tips as well as give out some tips on what I find that works well for me. Sounds like a great goal to have for the day. And, and we actually have 10 tips we're going to share with you and then a whole lot of others because I'm seeing them come through right now in the little questions box. So we're going to have a lot of tips. One of the cool things about the tips that we'll be sharing with you today is they'll not only work during this time of virtual communication, but these will translate back into the workplace. Mm -hmm. They're actually skills that you are honing that you'll be able to use once you're back into a cubicle, into your workspace, wherever it may be. So we hope that these will help in that way. So, well, how about let's kick things off. Uh, Kim, how about giving us our first tip that we're working with? So you guys, our first tip where we're gonna talk about is picking the right medium. And we know that there is a lot of, of, of communication apps that we've been using throughout this process. So Glenn, I believe you're gonna help us, you know, figure out how to choose the right one, right? Yeah, absolutely. And I wanna apologize first off for my hair. This is what two months of no haircut looks like for me. And uh, this is, uh, I think the longest my hair has been since high school. So it's, it's quite long. <laughs> No, um, but no, you, you raise a very important point there, Kim, is there are a lot of tools available to us in our new teleworking environment. Um, you have apps for messaging like GroupMe. Um, you have social media, Facebook, things of that nature. Uh, you have your uh, discussion boards, like if you are on Canvas, things of that nature. Um, also, good old fashioned email, text, phone calls. All these, and, and who can forget, I can't believe I didn't mention this first, but Zoom and, and go to meeting, those video conferencing. I think that's our, our new norm now is everybody's on Zoom um, or at least go to meeting, other, other options like that. But all these tools, all this technology is available to us, um, but it's important for us when we're determining what to use, it's important for us to consider the situation. Um, not all situations can be handled via text or via uh, an email. Um, so just some, some general tips. Uh, one of those first things that comes to mind uh, that you really need to pay attention to the tools that you're using to communicate is conflict. Um, I know that we are um, virtual now and, and we're not with each other on a daily basis, but that doesn't mean we're not gonna have conflict with our coworkers. Um, so if you do have conflict, it's probably not a good idea to try to settle it through text message or even through email because for multiple reasons. Well, first off, there's a lot of information that gets lost in an email or a text, any type of written communication. And the first thing that you lose is tone. And, mm -hmm. and what I mean by lose is it's misinterpreted. Um, you may type something in just straightforward you know, I'm, this is how I feel. I get it. I look at it and I read some sort of underlying tone that why are they yelling at me? Um, so when you're, when you're dealing with uh, conflict specifically, it's probably not a good idea to try to handle that through any sort of written uh, communication, phone calls, uh, Zoom meeting, go to meeting, virtual conferences. Um, those would probably be your best avenue forward. Just like um, if you're in the office, if you have a conflict, you're going to go speak to somebody about it. So approach it the same way in this virtual uh, work environment. And also, some things just take too much time to handle through an email. 
Uh, I know our team operates with the rule of three. If you have a situation where it's going to take more than three emails back and forth to settle an issue or to discuss an issue, email's probably not the best option for you to handle that. So when you're approaching or when you find yourself in a situation that's not conflict, but that you know is a little bit more in depth than just, hey, can you answer this question for me? Kind of project that out you know, in your mind, think, okay, well, this is one email, they're going to respond. Is it going to be settled in those three emails? If not, you're going to probably save yourself a lot of time and effort in waiting for those return emails. So just make a phone call. Hey, let's chat on this for about five minutes on the phone, or let's set up a Zoom meeting for 30 minutes and get this squared away. Um, but keep that rule of three in mind when figuring out which medium to use. But yeah, it, it's, it's important to realize that not all situations are created equal and you have to choose the right avenue that you're going to address and, and, and solve those issues that you face. We do not want to use this time as an excuse not to talk to people one-on-one -on -one with those important mm -hmm. issues. It would be so easy just to say, well, I had to send them an a, email because we're teleworking right now. I couldn't, you know, no, there's too many avenues, too many platforms that will allow you to speak to them face-to-face -face for us to just turn that off and say, oh, we'll do everything by, by written word. Because like you said, there's just too much involved as far as all the yeah. other parts of the, the communication. And that was something that Re Regina had sent us a message here saying, be aware of email tone. And she's so mm -hmm. right. And, and, and that's another thing is it can be completely innocent and, and you can have no underlying tone in how you're typing an email. And all it takes is one extra exclamation point. And it's, <laughs> It's blown up into something that was never intended. So it's really important to be mindful of that when you're figuring out the mediums that you're going to use, especially Excellent. the written word. Excellent point. So being mindful and using the right medium, just like you would if you were in the workplace, maybe even a little bit more carefully. It's a good <laughs> idea on this one. That got us started off right. I really like that one. Okay, well, uh, when we build on that, we, we go even further with that. Kim, what's our next area to talk about? So we already talked about, all right, how do we choose that right medium? So now we're going to talk about, okay, at, trying to figure out what is the best communi communication method for your, for your coworker. So Glenn, I believe you're going to take this into that on how to ask the person, right? Yeah, it, it, it's, you know, it, it kind of goes hand in hand with number one is mm -hmm. um, picking the right medium it's an individual, we're all individuals. Some people like to handle everything through phone calls. Some people, you know, prefer text. Some people want you to text and then, you know, call them. Um, so who better to tell you that than, um, than the person that you're gonna communicate with? And, and I know if you've been attending our, our webinars is you've heard us talk about the platinum rule. Everyone knows the golden rule, treat others the way they, uh, that you wanna be treated. But the platinum rule, we take that a step further and treat others the way they want to be treated. And you've heard us talk about those team norms. Um, for those, this may be your first webinar that you've attended uh, since we've gone to the virtual learning or from, uh, I'm sorry, the teleworking environment. But team norms are basically a unanimously agreed upon set of rules that your team's going to operate. Uh, and communication is one of those things that you agree on. And it's, something and, and if you've done it now you may be working through it now and seeing okay well what we originally set forth isn't really working anymore um you know maybe i think we we handled our uh, uh virtual working environment team norms because we have some that we operate with when we're in the office but we revisited them when we went to telework and um we sat down and i think we were a week into this and we talked about this is how we want to communicate going forward with our teleworking environment. Well, that was, I've lost track of time. That may have been a month ago. Um, I, 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 got, I, was, I was telling somebody earlier, if I didn't know I had a webinar today, I would have no clue it was Thursday. The days <laughs> of week just kind of run together. Um, but what you may have wanted in your communication preferences 
a month ago might be different now. Uh, maybe you wanted to, every, you know, let's Zoom meeting everything. Everybody, I want to see everybody's face. And now you may just, you know, hey, I'm kind of tired of Zoom. Let's, uh, let's handle this through a, via, you know, just an old fashioned phone call. <laughs> there we go. Um, so if you haven't had those team norms, now's a good time. It's never too late to sit down and, and hammer those out and get those team rules. Um, but if you have, it's okay to revisit them. It's okay to revise them because this is a very fluid situation that we find ourselves in. And um, stresses that we have now may not even been a, in our thought process uh, a month ago. You know, a month ago, we were just getting into the home learning for those of us who have kids. Um, now we, we may be a little stressed by 10 o'clock in the morning. And we want to have all our meetings done in the morning before school time starts. Um, but just some things to consider, you know, things change, be fluid with that, be understanding that things change. Um, so just because someone wanted something and wanted you to communicate a certain way a month ago or even a week ago, you know, it may have changed. So it's important for you to follow up with that. I'm not saying in every day, hey, you still want me to email you or you still want to handle this? But maybe, you know, a, a weekly or so, just, hey, are we still, you still, the communication styles, our communication preferences, are we still good with that? Um, you know, just, just check in on that. Excellent. Uh, yeah, there's so many things that have come up that we don't even think about, you know, yeah. that we've had ha happen, like the emergency stuff last night with all the storms coming through, you know, that's the kind of thing that we want to set up how we're going to communicate with people in those times to make sure that everybody's okay because we want to check on everybody. I know I was bugging my team to death last night going, there's a tornado headed for me. And, you know, <laughs> it helps having somebody to talk to like that because mm -hmm. I'm looking at that red line going, I don't like this. Uh, so, so we really do. We need to know not only how we can communicate normally, but emergency and when to communicate, when not to communicate, mm -hmm. and and what we could do better in working with everybody. So I, I'm with you 100%. We have got to be adapt adaptable. We have to be flexible as we mm -hmm. go through this process. And, I, like and that, I like what Glenn said in regards to, you know, what what may have been your communication method in, in the beginning of this process may have changed right now. And, and it's so true because I feel like mine has, my, my communication method has changed already. Mm -hmm. Glenn, yeah, it, 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 well, yeah, no, it, I was I was just going to, you know, the, the plan B, so to speak, you know, like you mentioned, uh, Nathan had not having Internet. God didn't have Internet yesterday. And, and having those backup plans and, and it's the flexibility, flexibility is key. If, if um, now is not a good time to be rigid and, and not, not be flexible specifically in your communication. Uh, Cause you know, it, all it takes is some severe weather and uh oh, our internet's down. What are we gonna do? Um, yep. So just be flexible. Excellent. Okay, we can do this. We got this. <laughs> okay, so we keep developing. We keep working on this. Well, okay, so so we've looked at those. We've looked at picking the right medium. We talked about asking the person to see what works for them. What's our next thing that we need to do? Well, our next thing that we need to do is to schedule the communication that we want to have with that individual. And I know that, you know, I have some methods in regards to scheduling communication, but Kalisha, she is our little uh, scheduling guru. And, you know, she and I have worked on, on several um, projects since we've been um, at working from home. And I know that she has a, a pretty solid method that I enjoy. Hello, everyone. It's good to see everyone again. So yes, I'm glad that Glenn mentioned revisiting your platinum rules because he's absolutely right. And one thing I want to encourage you to include in those platinum rules is time when it's appropriate for your coworkers to contact you. We want to make sure that we are not stepping on any toes because we can't assume that we know what everyone has going on in their home. So it's important to take the time to schedule that communication. Something that we like to do on our team before we schedule a Zoom meeting where we're expecting the other person to have their video up, we send a text and let them know that we're interested in meeting at a certain time and you know inviting people to join them and talking about what the expectations are. It's okay if you don't have your video or it's okay if you know your hair looks a certain way. You know, talking about those uh, those expectations 
for those meetings that you're looking to schedule, especially if you're seeing someone on those meetings. We know how important that, that appearance is to people. Another thing that um, I heard just recently in a webinar, they talked about having office hours. So, you know, if you remember in your old college days, you'd have a certain time that you can talk to your professor about certain papers or how to improve your grade. So a similar concept with your coworkers, knowing when's the best time that you can reach someone. Because nowadays it seems that if we send a text or if we want to call someone, some of us feel as though we're going to step on their toes or we're bothering them for some reason. And that may not be the case at all. So it's an easy way to communicate to your coworkers. This is a time that I'm available, 9 to 11. Call me if you need to, if you want to talk about work, if you want my help on a project, or maybe if you just want to talk about the latest show on Netflix. You know, schedule that time with them and, and let them know what times you are best available. And keep in mind, we talked about being flexible. You, if, just because you have those office hours doesn't mean that a kid won't pop in and need help on their homework or, you know, a, a dog won't need to be walked just at the time that you scheduled to talk to someone. So remember to be flexible, flexible with yourself in that sense too. One last note that I have um, is to know when your coworkers are starting work and when their workday is over. It's so important to know, those, know that information about your coworkers but then to also to respect that information. So try not to send those happy Monday texts or, or group me's at 6 a.m. just because you've woken up and you're excited about the day or um, try not to send those last minute emails about some work that you've been working on at six o'clock when someone's work day may have ended and then leaving that expectation. Should I contact or should I you know, be engaged during that time where I'm unofficially not at work um, or or you you have the sense to want to contact someone um, during that time, but you you know you're trying to set those and keep those boundaries yourself. I told you uh, she had some great tips. That's so good. That is so good because when we get those emails at at strange hours, we immediately think I have to be super employee. I have to answer it right now. Or mm -hmm. if we see that text, we think we have to respond, and and it puts us all back at work again. And yep. Right now, that division between work and home has to be kept as much as we can, or we will be working 24 hours a day. Oh, yeah. We're we great employees as we are. We don't need to be that far. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. I, I like what she also said about um, office hours. And you, you know, you said you know you'll have that those occasional distractions, but if you have those set office hours, you can kind of keep those other coworkers from right. you know from from those interruptions. So, yep. because they know that you know, from nine to eleven, mom is 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 doing something. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. And I like what some departments have actually done, where they create hours when everybody is going to be at their computers, so ah. they can schedule Zoom meetings at those specific times. They become you know team office hours where everybody right. is there, so it's easier to know that you can talk to people and and they can make sure they you know have a jacket or whatever they're supposed to have on, you know, for the for whatever meeting it is. Right. So I thought well, that was a really good idea. Come prepared to those meetings too. That's a really good point. I like that. Mm -hmm. so, so I thought that was a good idea they had. So excellent stuff there, Kalisha. We knew you would come, you would rise to the top with this. We knew because <laughs> scheduling is something that you are the expert at. Uh, you had, oh, she has another one, doesn't she? That's right. She, you're going to, um, you're very good at using all parts of communication as well, because you already said that, you know, in regards to scheduling, how you, you send out that text message and then you conduct that, um, that uh, meeting. So can you explain a little bit about using all parts? Yes. So I love that we've already talked a little bit about tone. Um, so much in, the, in this webinar already, and you guys are absolutely right. We definitely have to be aware of our tone um, and be very intentional about you know, what we're saying and, and the words that we're using. But it's not just tone that we have to worry about. So Kim and Chrissy, tell me if you remember in those customer service trainings where they tell you to smile when you're talking to someone on the phone, it could be a client or a customer, something like that. Right? I remember that. Yes, That's so they can tell when you are engaged in the conversation, even if you are smiling and they can't see you. So just be aware, even if you're on a call with someone, a client or a coworker, and they can't see you, be aware of your tone, but also your facial expressions. 
to show that you are engaged in the conversation, that you are not distracted by an email that's just popped up or something else that's going on in a room. You know, that's a one easy way that you can keep your attention, you know, to keep your eye contact on the agenda that may be on the page and not on anything else. You know, those things really help to, to, to show that you are interested and invested in the conversation. So also making sure that you're aware of your body language as well, that you're not slumped down or that you're not, you know, doing all, you know, all these other things that, you know, really are not necessarily positive nonverbal communication. Um, so that's just one thing to be aware of. But then also when you are um, on a video call and a lot of us like to use Zoom in those video calls because it does help us to connect a little bit better to someone and to make it seem as though we still have that face-to-face -face, um, interaction. But keep in mind that just because you're face-to-face -face doesn't mean that things can't be lost in translation or that things, or you can't um, miss, have miscommunication or any misalignment when you're talking to someone else. So try your very best to use um, all kinds of other things to help you to communicate. So you can continue to use your hand motions and you know continue to do little things like that to try to explain to someone what it is, the message that you're trying to convey. That's excellent points. Um, and you know, something I was just thinking about as you were talking about that, you have a cool setup behind you. It looks neat because you have a calendar and stuff like that. And it's it's just a very professional, nice setup. That is something that we want to think about too. You might want to think about redoing the background of wherever you do your Zoom meetings so that you have a pleasant or professional or whatever kind of background that you're trying to present to people. Right. Yep. Uh, I agree. I, I think it's, you know, and, and like today, see, I was very careful not to have a cat walking across the back. I'm, I'm working on these things. So you planned that, right? That's what it was. It was to make a point last week. But uh, so, so this is something that we can keep in mind that that's a case too, you know, and when you get into Zoom, you have the virtual backgrounds. And if you do that, mm -hmm. you need to, to be sure that you're using one that's a, that's a good for your, your, your need that you're doing right there. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, this is, this is good information. Mm -hmm. It's the same sort of stuff we use when we're in the office, isn't it? When it comes right down to it. Definitely. Right. Yep. And hopefully some things that we'll continue to bring back to the office whenever that happens to. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. I'm, I'm looking at some of the notes that people have sent to us. Thank you so much, Kalisha. Um, some of the things that people are saying right now is uh, the, um, let's see here. They have their, they're keeping, some of the people are keeping their regular meetings just like they've always had. And they keep it scheduled and they do it on Zoom and they're just as productive as if they were in the office. So mm -hmm. there's some really great things happening along this line about being able to use all the parts of communication and continuing to be able to use the uh, the visual part of communication with that one too. Ah, number five, this one's mine. Yes, <laughs> ensure a common vocabulary. Kim experienced this uh, last week when she was talking to me, because I seem so hip, you would think I would know all of those phrases the kids are using these days. What was the one you used on me, Kim? KMSL. And for okay, those of is, you out there, it's killing myself laughing. Killing myself laughing. See, I thought I was doing really good because I knew LOL. Obviously, I'm still a little behind the times. Uh, there are some that we know that most people know LOL, although I did have a person in the class who thought that was lots of love and was really upset that she was signing her emails to her grandchildren with laugh out loud. Uh, talk to you later, be right back, those kinds of things. We figure everybody knows, the challenge is it's not the case. We all have a different background. We all have different ones we've been exposed to. Uh, there's ones that can make us all feel kind of silly. DAE, not everybody knows that one. What's that? Yeah. Do, does anyone else is what that one means. Ah. Yeah, uh, and, and this one now totally threw me. I had to look this one up, E-L-I-5. And that one means explain it like I'm five years old. Wow, look at you teaching me new things. It's okay. I won't ever remember it. Uh, but it's, but it's it's a case of you know that one is you know explain it to me very simply. I need this basic. But it doesn't help to use those kinds of terms if the people on the other end don't know what they mean. So sounding cool is not what we're aiming for right now. And this goes with emojis and emoticons too because 
we don't all know what they mean. And sometimes you got somebody like me who's looking and going, are they smiling because they're happy or is it an embarrassed smile? I can't tell. So help us with this by not using anything that's going to be misinterpreted possibly. Mm -hmm. Instead, stick with the things that everybody understands. Use the same professional language that you use when you're writing an email, when you're talking to people, because then you're ensuring that they understand the way you want them to, and you're not making them ask, huh, all the time. That's uh, a good one, Christy, because huh? now I find now I'm using text more to communicate with coworkers than it was previously when we we're in the office. So it is important for me to be mindful of um, my vocabulary. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, and this is really interesting because some other people are saying the same thing. Sherry's saying, you know, sometimes we need to consider, the, you know, about LOL uh, in a professional email and, and Shirley saying that uh, th this new virtual communication is really helping her to be more aware of her expressions. So Ooh. these are all the kinds of things we want to keep in mind. So e the vocabulary is a huge part of the message and it's a huge part of our professionalism that we're trying to exude, that we're trying to show, like you said, for our agency and for ourselves. So mm -hmm. excellent, excellent stuff to keep in mind. Oh, uh, let's see here. What do we got next? Kim, this well, is yours. In, in regards to our, our vocabulary, we want to make sure that we're editing before we hit send. So especially when, when I said that we're using text, well, I'm using text message more than I was with before with my coworkers. And that um, autocorrect will change everything and change the meaning of what you are saying. So it's, it's important because I, I know that I do with my email, I look over and I proofread it before I hit the send button. And so it's important that, you know, all of the communications that you're doing written that if you edit before you send because you want to make sure and I think it's like you said earlier in regards to professionalism it's not whatever you are sending it's not just about um, you professionally it's a represent it's a representation of your agency and something else that Kalisha said um, and I believe it was Glenn as well in regards to tone it's very important that you you um, are mindful of your tone because tone can can also change the meaning that you wanted to convey to the recipient. So you know your tone is the music underneath your words. So it, it's important that you are mindful of that when before you hit the send button. You know, there's one thing that I love that I learned from our professional writing class, and that is that proofreading from the end of the document upward. I think that is such a cool thing. I do as well. And, and for those of you, it's called reading it backwards. And what it's supposed to do is it helps you concentrate on each word because the sentence structure is bro broken up. And so you're able to find grammatical errors a little bit um, different than, than, than you would reading the document the correct way. Yeah, it really works for me because when I'm reading it in the right order, I get lost up I get lost into the content and I'm not noticing the details. And by reading the last sentence first and working my way up, I'm paying attention to each sentence, each word. And uh, it's it's helped me catch a whole lot of those things that, you know, the fingers get going really fast when you're typing and you don't realize that that you forget things. Mm -hmm. All right. Excellent. This is this is good information. And yeah, this is stuff that's really going to be useful still when we get back into the office. Um, our next tip goes into the things that we send and more about them as a matter of fact doesn't it definitely checking your emotions is important it's it's kind of like edit, it's a part of the editing process basically and so i believe that glenn and Anne marie you guys do a really good job at checking your emotions before you hit send do you have any tips for us out there yeah it, the first thing that you need to keep in mind um with the the situation that that we're in currently is it's stressful um we have um our stresses of work our stresses just in general of life and then you're having new stress added um you may have new responsibilities um i'm a homeschool teacher now <laughs> um, you you have that the stress of a new um you know new responsibilities being stir crazy 
because you can't get out in and about like you used to and the fear, you know, of what's going on. Um, so all that kind of adds together and adds stress to um, your situation. And that stress, it fluctuates, you know, it's going to affect you some days, it may not um, other days, and that can affect how you respond to certain situations. So something, an email or an interaction that in the office under normal circumstances, you would have just blown off and be like, okay, no big deal. You may be having a really bad day and, and get something in the email in your inbox and just like, whoa, what, what, that extra exclamation point, I don't like that, you know, and you, you get upset. Um, so you need to keep your emotions in check. Use your emotional intelligence. Um, if you're going to respond to a situation or address a situation and you're angry and you're doing it through email, uh, it's helpful. Um, in fact, Dana, who taught me this, is write out your email and let it sit, you know, whether it be for a couple hours or for a day and go back the next day and look at it and reread it and look at it objectively. Make sure that there's no emotional um, ties in there. It's simply the objective facts that you're addressing. Um, so that's a good tip. Another thing um, is if you think you may be overreacting, it never hurts the, the sounding board, whether it be a colleague or a supervisor, just like, hey, can I chat with you for a few minutes? I, I just wanna tell you what's going on. Um, am I overreacting? Is, 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 should I be taking it the way that I'm taking it? Um, they may agree with you, may, they may be like, you know that you're, you're kind of overreacting, that's not a big deal. Um, so that helps. Um, and it, it helps if you wanted to send them the email. Hey, here's the email, here's what's going on. Does this sound a little too harsh? That helps as well. So, you know, let it sit, get feedback, whether it be just explaining the situation or having somebody review your emails, um, just to make sure that you're keeping it objective and your emotions out of the situation. Good advice. Anne-Marie, want to add something to that? Hi. Sure. Um, it's difficult uh, to hide emotions. You know, emotions don't lie. It's, it's just human nature. Um, so instead of working hard to try to hide your emotions, you know, when, when you're talking to somebody, um, be a little bit, maybe just flip it around and focus um, on becoming more aware of your feelings and how you might be coming across. Um, and once that approach is taken, you know, you fall in a very natural pattern to be a better communicator because you've acknowledged that yourself and you know and also consider their feelings um, and recognize that you know the, the misunderstandings that occurred um, and then just apologize um, say something like I, I apologize that I was really short and I came across that way I didn't in, intend to and I think um, it's totally okay to apologize and I think that will uh, earn a lot of respect on both side, both parties or wh whoever many is involved. I like that uh, Anne-Marie because it, so often when we think about check your emotions we always think about that written communication but in your your interactions, whether it's, you know, in person, whether it's, you know, on a Zoom call, it is important to check your emotions, apologize, and, and realize that you're feeling that feeling. So before you have that interaction, you know, identify how you're feeling, uh, address it before you have that, that interaction. I yeah. like that. That's it. That's great. Really good ideas, y'all, because uh, in the situation we're in right now, Emotions and just situations can get all out of perspective uh, mm -hmm. and, and it happens. And it's really great if we have that person that we can talk to, that we can say, hey, I just need to get this off my chest, I need to talk. Or if we just spend some time actually, you know, thinking or, or self-analyzing to make sure of, of how we feel about certain things. Glenn, you have something to add, don't you? And, and Anne-Marie hit on an, an important uh, point there is we're all going through this and we're all going to have bad days. There's going to be um, days that we're not ourselves and, and that we're struggling and we're just the slightest little, you know, hair on our scale will push <laughs> us over the edge. Mm -hmm. And having that understanding that, you know, if you do are, are, are the recipient of an email where you detect tone, 
check yourself. I don't want to say check yourself, you know, to quote the old rap song, but, you know, but, you know, just really take a step back and, and be like, you know, ask yourself, maybe this person's having a bad day and, and don't try not to read things in there that may not be there and, and just be understanding and patient of others as well. Excellent. Appreciate those. Very, very good insights and very appropriate for what we're going through right now. Y'all are awesome. So uh, checking your emotions. Okay, we've got we've got another idea there. The next one comes back to me because this one's about evaluating and adjusting. And uh, like we've been talking about a lot today, okay? We have been going through this situation for some weeks now and we're seeing what works, we're seeing what doesn't work. The strongest thing that we can get out of this difficult situation is being flexible and being able to recognize that what works and building on that and being willing to recognize what doesn't work and how it can be addressed. That's why I'm saying every time you have a meeting, every time you work with somebody on a project during this time, take the time at the end of that meeting to stop and ask the important question. So. What could we do better? What could we improve? If you do that at the end of every meeting you have, it means you will continually get better at what you're doing. And if there's nothing to improve, well, Lord, it's time to pat yourself on the back. So this is something to keep in mind. This is an opportunity for us to continue to adjust. And you know that the skills you're developing right now, the things that you're getting even better at, all of us are getting better at virtual communications. Great. Let's keep building on that so that when we go back into the workplace, we can use it to communicate with others. We can use it to continue this strength. We can use it to communicate even if somebody is not right there at their desk. So the skills you're getting right now, remember that you are developing new work skills and still they can keep getting better. At the end of every meeting, ask, what could we improve? Hmm. So. Oh. I like that one, Christy, because okay. that brings me into, you know, our, our next topic, speaking of things that I would like to improve, and that's communicate just to check in. So often, you know, we forget to just to communicate, not about work, but just to check in on our coworkers. And Glenn and Nathan, I believe you guys have some tips for us on that, right? Yes. And, and, and my first comment kind of goes hand in hand with my last comment that I made regarding, you know, keeping your eye out for, for communication from somebody that may come off, you might detect some tone there. Um, and it's important to, first off, use your emotional intelligence. If, if you recognize that, you know, there's, you maybe re get an email from a coworker or a colleague um, that's kind of out of the norm. You, you might detect a little bit of sniffiness or, or bluntness. That's a sign that, you know, maybe that person's not okay. Maybe they're struggling and that would be a good, use your emotional intelligence skills to check in and be like, hey, you know, everything okay? Everything, you know, is what's, what's going on? Do you need a chat? Um, you know, because again, like I said, we're all struggling at different times and, and it's important for you, whether you're a supervisor or whether you're just, um, you know, you're looking in your coworkers, um, recognizing those behaviors, recognizing those actions that may give insight into that person and what they're dealing with and then maybe they are struggling and they need somebody to reach out and they need somebody to um to to talk to um but it's also important to you know as a supervisor aspect you know i have employees that i am responsible for that are responsible for producing something and you know, it's very easy as a supervisor to, when I'm communicating with my employees, to focus task, 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 instead of let's let's focus on the person as well. So yes, there's a job that needs to be done. There's things that need to be done, but there's also a person that you need to make sure that they're able, you know, mentally and emotionally, they're able to do their job. So it's important for you to be there. But you can do that as a coworker too. You know, you don't have to be someone's supervisor to check on in them check on them. Um, so recognize those, those behaviors, recognize some signs that maybe you need to check on somebody. Um, but this also on the other side of that coin, it's important for you to keep your pulse on yourself. Um, you know, we're all going through something 
And there may be times where you're not okay. You know, you're, you're struggling and whatever it may be, you know, you're having a bad day. You didn't get much sleep because you were stressed, whatever. You're just not your normal self. And it's okay. It's okay if you find yourself in that situation. And it's okay to reach out to whether it be a coworker, whether it be a supervisor, whether it be a friend, a family member, whatever. The point is, Keep yourself, keep the tabs on yourself as well. And if you need to talk, if you need to reach out, do so. You don't have to just bear it alone and, and not get it off your chest and, and talk to somebody about it. So take care of yourself as well. Amen. Please. Nathan, I know you have something to add to that. Yeah, to um, piggyback off of what Glenn said, communication doesn't have to be about work all the time. Um, reaching out a simple, how are you? How's it going? It can go a long way. Um, in these times, some people won't be as vocal about what's going on with them. Some people may even bury themselves at work to kind of cover up what they're dealing with. So checking in is a good way um, to let them know that you're there, if they need anything, and vice versa. Um, it builds trust and better relationships. And knowing that you have someone there who genuinely cares about your well-being it kind of gives you a sense of comfort just to know that you have that person there. Um, this is a good tip just to keep in mind whenever you return back to your offices. Um, keep making that human connection and just be genuine. I love that. You know, this has been an opportunity for me to get to know people on our team better than I've ever known them before. Mm -hmm. And I, I love that. I mean, it's amazing that being like this, being able to meet like this is giving us a chance to talk more specifically than we do in the office where it always seemed kind of superficial. And I think that this is a, a great thing that's coming out of this, that we're going to carry these, these same relationships back into the workplace. Mm -hmm. You guys, great input there. And yeah, that let's remember just to do that every so often, just call and say, how mm -hmm. are you? Especially for yeah. our, our coworkers who are by themselves at this time. It's a really nice thing to be able to do. Thanks, and What guys. about the extroverts? Don't forget the extroverts. Oh, and the there. extroverts who are lonely and, yeah, okay, excuse me. I'm sorry, Kim. Guess what Kim is. Okay, so, <laughs> <laughs> yes. So, talk to your extroverts, too, because they're just sitting there waiting to talk to somebody. Okay, <laughs> excellent stuff there. This brings us to our last big tip for today. And, uh, oh, <laughs> this one fits so well. Kim. Okay, first of all, you have to laugh at your mistakes when you have things like last week, I had on the mantle back there, my cat Ralph pacing back and forth during part of the webinar. Yes, we are going to make mistakes. Yes, it's going to seem really embarrassing at the moment, but it's not. I, I, so tell us a little bit about this, Kim, and your view about number 10. My view about number 10, did you know that laughter is one of the greatest gifts that we could have? And I believe you said that you could, it, it burns calories as well, right? Yes, it does. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm going to laugh all the time. So, <laughs> so um, just it, when we, we talk about mistakes, mistakes has such a negative connotation associated with that word. It, it's, it's, it's a growing opportunity. Okay, it's learning from from an error. So much time, so many times we put pressure on ourselves, and when we make a mistake, and you know, sometimes you just have to, you know, take a step back, laugh, and just learn and grow from those mistakes. So, um, did you know that that laughter has it, it can improve your psychological and your physical health? Mm-hmm. And so, it, you know, it's it's really important for us, you know, to be able to know that we're human, have patience, and be kind to ourselves. That's important. Be kind to yourself. Yes. Eleanor Roosevelt said, learn from the mistakes of others because you can't live long enough to make them all yourself. That's why he, we make these mistakes here on the success series webinars so that you don't have to make them yourself. You can learn from ours. See, we're saving you valuable time, even in these broadcasts. So yes, uh, it, it's great to be able to, to laugh at those. You're gonna laugh at them someday. Might as well go ahead and start now. So uh, keep that in mind and let's let's be sure that we we stay light. You know, we can, you can take your work seriously 
and still take yourself lightly. And that's a great gift that we have as a possibility for us. Um, let's see here. Uh, we have actually come to the end of our list, our, our list, haven't we? Oh my gosh, that's all 10 tips right there that uh, that we've come through today. Gotten some good ideas from these. Uh, what I'd like to do is some closing thoughts. I'd like to go back through here. I'm going to take a peek at some of these uh, of our comments and our questions today. Uh, and and Kimberly, you can look down there in the chat because I think there's some things in there too. Uh, let's see here. No, we did not get a llama for today's presentation. Yes. Okay. We got that one again. Uh, how do you deal with having trouble hearing through the headphones? on phone mm -hmm. calls, et cetera. I don't know what the problem is, that there's a lot of background noise and the person's voice skips often. Uh, uh, we are gonna invite our people, uh, anybody who has expertise in this can come in and jump in and, and join us on these these questions. Uh, I had I found that I really had to go through a whole lot of different sets of headsets before I found one that worked effectively for me. And it could just be that I don't hear well. Kalisha, what, what do you think? <laughs> Oh, your microphone is must must be muted. Yes. Just talking to myself, like you said, making mistakes so that we can laugh at ourselves. There we go. <laughs> so um, I, I've actually learned a, just a, a little bit about um, headsets and that um, I didn't realize that there are some headsets that will allow me to actually um, will connect the audio as well. And so I've been able to get a headset. I've, I've used it for work, but also for school but a headset that allows me to not be distracted by everything that's going on around me, but that I can also speak through as well so that people can see me. Because what I was having to do was to put my headset in to listen and take the headset out to actually use my audio. So and I don't know if that's helpful, but that's just that's, it, 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 this. So the, the right tool for the job. Right. Okay, so specialized tools might be the situation in that and uh, and checking that headset and seeing if it's the best one for what you're trying to do. I know there's some of them that they say are, are, you know, supposed to be really good ones for making a phone call and they do not work well for me. So they are not created equal. <laughs> Unfortunately, you learn by try about error, right? Yep. So. Definitely. And ordering them online, and then you get to that point where it's like, oh, it's too expensive to send it back. It's too much trouble. I'll just go to the store. So we, I have so many. I have the dead headphones drawer in my house with so many sets of earbuds and headphones. But hey, we we learn, and then we find our ones that work for us. Excellent point, Kalisha. Uh, some other notes that we have over here. Uh, virtual bingo. Okay, now this is from somebody who gave us this, this tip. Since I'm at the office three times a week, I make a list of the tasks due within the next five days. These are placed on a bingo board and sent to the staff Monday morning each week. It's due back to me on Friday. It's a great way to make sure the tasks are being completed in a timely manner, and it's an accountability. And within the board is also spaces for fun. For example, mark this space if you enjoyed a cup of coffee, this space if you walked the dog, this space if you got dressed up for the office, etc. Oh, what wonderful ideas those That's are. So oh, that Sean Stewart. I love those ideas. That's so, great. Um, some cool things there. Um, okay, asking about the YouTube videos. I'll show you that at the end of the, the session today. Um, let's see here. Uh, what um, else we have here? Yes. yes. Very mm -hmm. said to make sure that your computer audio speaker settings match the settings in your online meeting. That's excellent. Excellent point. Yes. Yeah, you can check on there and just see because it'll give you the choices. Sometimes you'll have your headphones in and you don't realize that it's actually coming through the computer. And so take the time to do those audio checks. I know they seem like a waste of time, but when that pops up at the beginning of any of your presentations, go ahead and do the audio check to be sure. Mm -hmm. All righty. Uh, let's see here. Um, Okay, and I, I, I am not ignoring y'all. I'm reading the questions. I'm sorry, I should say that instead of just sitting here and staring. Um, okay, <laughs> send a general reminder to all to please make no hesitation to contact you when you're responsible for com communicating with a huge group of people. Yes, yeah, uh -huh. make sure that everybody knows you're, you have the open door policy even if there's no door involved right now. <laughs> um, amen on the laughter. I confess I'm not perfect. Brenda, we don't believe you. Uh, <laughs> um, 
Let's see here. What else we have here? Uh, uh, if you're getting a yeah, yeah, Mary, yeah. Put put yourself on mute when you're not talking and ask other people to do that so that you're not getting a lot of background noise. Um, so this is this is good stuff. If you have a smartwatch, uh, put it on do not disturb mode, and that'll help reduce distractions as you're talking there. Um, so some good stuff here, some mm -hmm. good ideas. Uh, and, and of course, it's open for our folks if they want to jump in with any of their closing thoughts. But basically, the things that I'm seeing that we've talked about today is that communication is still the same. It's yes. still just as necessary. It's just changed format in a lot of ways. Mm -hmm. And we have got to be adaptable. We have got to be willing to say, all right, I know how to communicate really well, yes, but this is a whole new world. And so I have to be willing to develop my skills even further. And that's gonna mean that we continue to, to practice with these things, whether it's just practicing talking to your computer you know, knowing that there's a person on the other side of it, whether it's starting to find as many different ways of communicating or whether it's like we talked about earlier when we on the ask the person, finding out which ways other people are comfortable with. All of these are things that we have to keep in mind with virtual communication or any communication. Kim? I like that. Some things that I've learned is definitely that ELI 5, that was interesting right there. And um, definitely uh, some things that I, I some tips that I took away is trying to find ways of com improving communication with others and to try and check in on those coworkers just to say hi. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's a, a lot of folks right now who are completely by themselves. Mm -hmm. Please take a moment to call a coworker, to call a friend, to call a family member who you know is by themselves. I, uh, I think that's, that's something that we just need to keep in mind. Excellent. Well, um, we're real excited about next week's webinar also. Right, Kim? Definitely, you guys. Our next topic is going to be lessons learned. So we want you guys to share those lessons that you've learned along the way. We want you guys to share with us. So if you have a tip or a lesson learned, you can see, you can send it right there at the bottom at christy.atwood at la.gov. We want yeah. to get anything that you have discovered, any realizations you've made, uh, any ways that you've realized to reprioritize, anything that you were doing that you found a new way of doing that you say, hey, I'm gonna keep doing this once I get back into the workplace because it works better, those kinds of things. We want you to share those with us. So we invite you to send them to us ahead of time so that we can present them on the webinar or we could even invite you to come and present them to us. We would love to have you as one of our internet stars on here. So please be thinking about what your tip would be, what thing you would tell somebody that you've learned through this time of teleworking and, and social distancing that has changed the way that you think or the way that you do business. We would like to have that on next week's program. And, we, and if you haven't registered for that one yet, be sure that you do that, all right? Um, for those of you who try to figure out where to get the handouts from this, you go to the state civil service page. If you're not sure where that is, you just search state civil service. You go to the talent development page when you pull down the departments and you pull that up and it gives you talent development. And the last thing on the list there is success series. And when you click on that, it brings up all the handouts for this and all of the webinars that we've done so far. Uh, and also, it will bring up the uh, these different webinars that we're doing. So you can go ahead and register for next week's if you have not done so yet and, and get yourself up to date on that. The other thing, you can also find it by going to YouTube and just do a search on YouTube of Louisiana State Civil Service. And that'll bring you to the State Civil Service page on YouTube. And you choose the playlist that says Success Series and you have this and all of the webinars on there. And, and we'll, we get these up as quickly as possible. I gotta tell you, our, our tech group has been incredible. Uh, they have just been wonderful because they've done those. Uh, Todd's been working overnights getting those up. And then, oh gosh, yeah, Lacey uh, and, uh, and Nathan and Todd all have now actually gotten these into Leo. So if you don't have access or you can't get on these or you miss one and you want to go back through them, you can go into Leo and just in the course catalog, search webinar and it'll bring up all of these and the other webinars we've done. I love what they've done with these. Uh, 
look at the screen. It's really cool because what they've done is they've broken it down to topics. And, and you can actually go straight to the topic that you need more information on. So they have done an incredible job getting those up on Leo. Please take advantage of those. And once again, thank you to our folks for, for doing all of that. And by the way, thank you to all of our guests on here today, all of our team members, and of course to you, Kimberly. You too, Christy. I always have fun on these. Uh, isn't it great? It's just a good time. And, and we have the best viewers in the world because mm -hmm. they work for the state of Louisiana and they're just incredibly talented. And I really appreciate the fact that they're willing to share. And I think that uh, that's the best part of this. We actually get to share some of the things that are working for us and, and share some of our tribulations too. So we thank you so much for being a part of today's webinar. We look forward to seeing you next Thursday. We look forward to getting information from you before then. And until the next one, we ask you to please keep on learning. Every day for every citizen.